A fight I've had circled on my calendar since as long as I found out that it was official. We have South Africa's Drikas Duplessis taking on Trevin Giles. I'm out for Trevin Giles. This guy's a police officer in Houston. And you look at the way that he fights, it's really interesting. Some fights, he can grapple a little bit. Most of the time, it's with his boxing. And you look at his last fight against Roman Delige. The guy had no fear, and he went in there with that power jab, just tossing the power jab, standing, planting, and throwing that left hand out there. But for Trevin Giles, he can bring his boxing into combination. Doesn't throw the most kicks. Maybe you'd like to see a little bit more out of him. But Trevin Giles, a very, very fun fighter, coming out of a really neat gym in W4 Training Center. And he's taking on Drika Stuplessy, the former Cage Warriors champ. This is a guy that had absolute wars for as long as they lasted against Roberto Soldich. Comes into the UFC with a full head of steam. I sold tickets on him. And holy smokes, for the first 90 seconds of that fight, was I ever nervous. It was just a really, really weird performance. And I know octagon jitters are something that we sometimes bring up, we sometimes don't. But they were apparent when Drinkus Duplessy made his debut. It was just weird. He was in this, like, odd defensive shell almost in the first half of his fight against Marcus Perez. And listen, Perez isn't some world beater. Like... I, we everyone had kind of expected Duplessis to win that fight. There was your sort of springboard in the UFC audience, and he did look good, but that performance does leave a lot of question marks, at least moving forward. Like, is that just an outlier of a performance? Do you just need that one under his belt, and now he will be good? The other thing I did worry about in that fight was he just doesn't deal with pressure all that well. And I'm not saying it was just in the Perez fight, but just he's a tall, rangy guy in this division, and he is someone who does like to use his kicks and his longer range combinations together, so... But you do have guys like Trevin Giles who are going to try to close that distance on him a lot. It's going to be really interesting to see how Duplessis does to create distance in the cage. Because, like I said, he doesn't really have... He has good kicks, but he doesn't have, like, Tony Ferguson kicks where it's like, okay, I've got the front kick to really establish my range. I do think Duplessis is going to have to add some of those tools into his game because a lot of guys are just going to try to get as close to him as possible, as close to him as possible, close that distance. Because I would say if Duplessis has any significant weakness, and uh, he is a very well-branded mixed martial artist, I worry a little bit about his straight or his takedown defense against some of the upper echelon guys in the UFC. It's not that Trevor Giles is going to go out there and put the wrestling shoes on all of a sudden and wow, he looks like Chris Wyman, but Trevor Giles is a guy who offensively can mix in some takedowns and this is what I don't like when you bring up the power jab of Trevin Giles. You're undervaluing his striking when you just bring that up because he's way more than just a power jab. He has great combinations and great hand speed. And I really do think his hand speed is the thing that makes him unique at this at this middleweight division because other than guys, and I'm going to bring up some really good fighters right now, but he does remind me of like a Robert Whitaker, which is the way he throws his combinations, a very loose way uh, that he does throw. And that's what does concern me against a guy like Duplessis because the Duplessis, he's got good power himself. He's got great offensive support submissions and I'll be completely honest right now Craig has a much better read on both of these fighters than I do so I'm just gonna give you guys my notes on both and then he can probably give you the better analysis on the two I like the Trevin Jones line and his stats so much it's not even funny and listen with fight night picks we bring up little stats here and there and it's more for fun but when I go through this 3.26 strikes per landed per minute is just below the UFC average he absorbs 1.88. That's a great strike differential. 56% accuracy to 62% defense. That's really, really good, especially in the UFC. You can't look at Duplessis' numbers because he's had one fight and it was back and forth wildness, which is most of his fights. You look at Giles, though. Takedown average per 50 minutes, 1.37. His defense is 80%. His offense, or sorry, his defense is 79%. His offense is 80%. Those are lovely little numbers. And when you look at it for a guy like Trevin Giles, it's not like he's fought like absolute scrubs, right? Like again, his last fight, Roman Delice, beat Bavon Lewis, he beat James Krause in a close fight. I get it. Lose to Gerald Mearshart, lose to Zach Cummins. That was kind of dirty. Loses by Gilly in both. Beat Antonio Braganeto. Antonio, I'm calling you out. Where are you at? I, it seems like every time I talk about Trevin, I want to see more of Antonio. And he beat James Bachnevik in his debut and knocked him out in 2017. Trevin has a really, really good line. He's also a long, rangey striker. Now, in this fight, he's going to give up a little bit of height. Reach, he's going to give up as well. But he does like to keep his head back, and he strikes quite well. So defensively, lends credence to how sound he is. Drikas Duplessis, a little bit more compact and in tight when he throws. He backs off a little bit on his kicks. So maybe if he fought a fighter who has really, really good head kicks, they can catch him when he backs up. It's going to be a really tough fight for Duplessis either way. And when I look at the odds, Matt, they're almost pick them odds. Duplessis open uh, an underdog, plus 110. He's a minus 117 right now. Trevin Giles open a minus 130. He's minus 106. And if we have a look at the total topology votes, 
Maybe a little bit of a surprise. 1,348 total votes, 64% Duplessis, 48% by knockout, 16% by submission, 31% by decision. For the 36% that have Giles, 54% by decision, 36% by knockout. So there are a lot of people predicting a finish in this fight. Again, Duplessis, the former champ with EFC. Wow. Welterweight, middleweight, former welterweight champ with KSW. A lot of quality fights on his record. Again, the two sold each fights. His first fight that he lost was to Gareth McLennan that was in the UFC. So Duplessis has taken on some good talent. And that Perez fight, did he just have to kind of weather the storm and realize, hey, I'm in the UFC? Because that one was in Fight Island. This one's going to be in the States. Drikas Duplessis, never fought in the States before. So that could be important. But uh, for me, I do ever so slightly like Duplessis in this fight. Might be a little bit of bias there. So let that be uh, cast aside. And I'm going to keep this one off my card. But I absolutely love this fight. So this is actually going to be the first one we disagree on. I am ever so slightly going to pick Trevin Giles. Because what Giles does is he does have the counter for a lot of what Duplessis does well. Like Duplessis does give up space sometimes. You know what Trevin Giles is really good at? Moving forward and throwing in combination. And the fact that Duplessis does leave with his head straight back does worry me when Giles does use his combinations. Because when he is throwing two, three, four strikes in a row, that's when he is at his most dangerous. Look at the Bavon Lewis fight is a great example. So for me, I'm going to have her so slightly pick Giles. Matt, I absolutely love this fight. We're, uh, we're split. I was going to say we're undecided, <laughs> but we're split on the pick. I'm going with South Africa's Drikas Duplessis. You're going with Houston's own Trevin Giles to get the win. I can't wait for not just this fight, but the entire card. We get some big bangers at welterweight coming up that you're not going to want to miss out on. Carlos Condit's got a big time fight. So keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, as we always say. Let's, let's get, get into, into it. it.